Thank you for staying with us on the newsroom. The House of Representatives has called for the declaration of a national emergency on ritual killings across the country. The motion comes amid the incessant killing of innocent Nigerians for ritual purposes, the latest being the murder of Sophia Okewo in Ogun State. The House condemned the upsurge of reported ritual killings with increasing cases of abductions and missing persons in different parts of the country, saying the culprits in most cases rape, maim, kill and obtain sensitive body parts of unsuspecting victims for rituals. Inspector General of Police Usman Baba has been charged to take urgent steps to increase surveillance and intelligence gathering with a view to apprehend and prosecute all perpetrators of ritual killings in Nigeria. A high court of the Federal Capital Territory sitting in Gudu has struck out the murder charge against the owner of Hilton Hotels and Resorts Ileife Ramon Adedoi and six others in the connection with the death of Timothy Adegoki, a postgraduate student of the Obafemi Awolowo University Ileife Ocean State on November 6, 2021. It was reported that Adegoke died in controversial circumstances at the hotel where he lodged while sitting for an examination. Police had earlier said that Adedoni was charged with illegally disposing Adegoke's body, altering and cancelling his payment receipt and removing the hotel's CCTV cameras with intent to destroy evidence. The Joint Admissions and, Admin and Matriculation Board JAM has scheduled the registration for the 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination and Direct Entry for Saturday, February 9 to March 26, 2022. The decision came barely 24 hours after the board stated that it would not reschedule the registration process following the suspension of the verification portal for the National Identity Number NIN of the National Identity Management Commission NIMSI due to hitches. JAM further added that the new and improved procedures for the 2022 U2ME registration will be made available on the board's website, its weekly bulletin, as well as other media outlets on Monday, February 14, 2022. In COVID stories, Ugandan authorities are seeking to legally mandate vaccines in draft legislation aimed at boosting the East African country's drive to inoculate more than more people rather against COVID-19. The proposed bill, which is subject to changes as it faces scrutiny by a parliamentary health committee, calls for a six-month jail term for failure to comply with vaccination requirements during disease outbreaks. However, in January, Uganda's health minister announced that more than 400,000 vaccine doses were to be destroyed after they expired before being used. In business, the Nigerian Insurance Association has said insurance companies have paid 11 billion Naira claims on losses suffered during the 2020 hashtag NSAS protest. This was made known by Chairman of the NIA, Ganyu Musa, at a media briefing in Lagos. The NIA had earlier released a report that the claims were paid on vandalization, lootings, thefts, deaths and cases of loss of cash. The NIA further added that claims were settled on malicious damage, business interruptions, burglary attacks, and on fire and burnt sites. In international French President Emmanuel Macron, the first leader of a major Western power to meet Vladimir Putin since Russia amassed troops near Ukraine, says he believes steps can be taken to de-escalate the crisis and called on all sides to stay calm. Macron shuttled from Moscow to Kiev on Tuesday in a bid to mediate a settlement and avoid war. Although Macron had no breakthroughs to announce, he says he thinks his talks have helped prevent the crisis from escalating further. The Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, has confirmed the date and venue for the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 playoff leg between the Super Eagles and Ghana. In a statement, the Federation said the return leg of the playoff will be played at the renovated MKO Abiola Stadium, Abuja, on March 27. However, Ghana Football Association is yet to confirm if the first leg built for the Cape Coast Stadium will be played on March 23 or 24. That's all on the newsroom. Thank you for watching. I am Simi Soladigun.